Hey everybody and welcome to my shop. I have been working with steel a lot lately and I've been also experimenting with a technique called steel bluing a lot. And I got so many questions from you about this process. What is steel bluing? How does it work? Why do I do it? What's the pros and cons? And what are the different methods? And that's why I decided to make a dedicated video about all of these questions. First of all, I want to say I think it should be called steel blackening and I might refer to it as steel blackening because that's what's in my head. It does look blue, but I think it looks more black. So if you hear me say blackening steel, what I mean is bluing steel. I just think blackening sounds more correct. <laughs> Let's start right at the top. What is steel bluing? So it is basically forming a layer of rust on the steel that is posh rust. It's fancy rust. It is rust that one looks cool because it's blackish or bluish and it's rust that doesn't eat the steel. And if this layer of rust is there, the regular nasty rust will have a harder time eating the steel. This is how I understand this, right? So what this means is that blued steel has some kind of rust prevention properties, but not 100%. You always have to keep the surface oily and you have to maintain it. Think of it as a cast iron pen. You want to have that pen always oily so you have the non-rust and non-sticky finish on it. If you wash it with soap, if you soak it in water, this shiny, super beautiful layer will wash off and then your pen will rust. Basically, blackened steel is the same as a cast iron pen with a beautiful finish on it. Now that we know what it is, let's talk about the methods to get it. And there are a couple of different methods, but for the common maker shop use, I think there are mainly two methods to do it. And one is hot bluing and the other one is cold bluing. Let's start with a hot bluing technique. So you pick your piece of steel that you want to change the color of. And first of all, you have to degrease it. And that goes for both methods. Then you heat it up with a torch or some other kind of flame. And then you quench it in oil. I just use regular vegetable oil. And then right away, you can tell that the steel has a different color. And that's it. You're done. This is the hot bluing technique. Cold bluing is a little bit different. You have to work with chemicals. There are bluing solutions that you simply apply to the clean piece that you want to blue. And then after you apply it, you wash it up with water after a couple of minutes, after the coat is nice and even, you wash the stuff up with water and then you uh, drain it with oil and you let it sit for 12 to 24 hours. And after that, your coat is finished. And here you can see both results. On the right side, you have the cold bluing technique. And on the left side, you have the hot bluing technique. And here's a quick example why you really need to degrease your material. I just left a fingerprint on a clean piece of steel. And as you can see, the solution will not work on oily surfaces. So make sure your pieces are absolutely clean and degreased. So which is the right process for you? This is absolutely impossible for me to answer because it really depends on what you want to do. What is the work piece that you want to blacken? For example, I did it on my motorcycle tank. It is not a good idea <laughs> to take a motorcycle tank that is filled with flammable fumes and heat that up and quench it in oil. It is very, very dangerous. And also, even if it wasn't filled with highly flammable fumes, I wouldn't even be able to quench a piece that is as big as a motorcycle tank. So that's why I decided to cold blue it. Another reason to go with cold blue might be if you work with super thin sheet metal and applying heat would mean that the sheet metal might warp. Or if you work with pieces that are hardened, which would mean if you apply heat again, the hardness would be gone. Those are all reasons to use the cold blue method. I think hot bluing looks a little bit better um, because it's more bluish and because you have a little bit more variance um, in the colors, you can play more with the color that you want to have. 
Cold blowing is much more convenient and usually I use it for furniture or stuff like this. So cold blowing is always the method that I pick because the other one wouldn't apply. Now, let's talk about the number one reason for me to use this method at all, because it's rarely about rust prevention, which is not even the best, like blackening steel is not the best rust prevention that you can have. We talked about it in the beginning. So my number one reason to blacken steel is just aesthetics. I love how it looks. I think it's a magical effect. If you apply the solution and it turns black in a second, it looks so, so cool. So this is why I really like this method. And I also did some experiments. For example, the motorcycle tank that I just talked about. I uh, scraped the paint off with a very, very rough grid. That means the whole tank was pretty scratched up. And then I blackened the whole thing, let it sit for 24 hours in oil. And then I came back with very fine sandpaper and took the, the, the bluing surface off, which means that at the end, the blue and black surface was only in the deep scratches from the, from the rough grid sandpaper that I used to take off the paint. It looks really, really nice. I especially love it because the sloppier you work when sanding off the paint, the better it looks at the end because you really want these deep scratches. I think it looks great. But of course, after everything was done, I had to seal it with varnish. Otherwise, this would not be rust protected. Another pretty interesting use case was a barbecue that I built recently. The video isn't out yet, it will be out sometime in September, but the idea was to have a barbecue that also works as a fire pit. And it's more a design piece, so I wanted it to look really nice. I decided to blue the steel. And the cool thing is, because it's not really an additional layer like varnish would be, this is a very, very, very thin layer of oxide which is heat proof. So even after we made a fire in this thing, the finish still looked super good. I mean, in some parts we had little, little peaks of rust, which is fine, it's an outdoor piece. But if you keep it clean, if you oil it well, this should be fine for a long, long time. And I think it looks really, really cool, especially if you think that the alternative would have been to completely paint it with heat resistant paint, which would have made it look, you know, completely different. So I love the natural look of the black and steel. So this is my video explaining everything I know about the blackening or bluing process. I hope I answered all of your questions. And I want you to know, if you see me doing something that you don't understand, that you want more infos on, please let me know in the comments. I make these videos now regularly, but I can only make them if you let me know that there is need for clarification. I'm listening. I am happy to share the little knowledge that I have uh, and I enjoy making these videos so don't hold back. That is it from me this week. Um, I have some interesting stuff coming up. It might involve a Multicar M25. If you don't know what that is, do yourself a favor and Google it. <laughs> this thing makes me so happy. Um, otherwise, if you want to know more about all the people that I work with, I mean, you obviously saw some stuff, some uh, Ballistol stuff that I was using in the video. Check out the links in the description to all the sponsors that I work with. Uh, oh, and there's one more question that I get on a daily basis. People can't find my merch store, which is because we are completely rebuilding everything. There is some cool stuff coming, so I think it might be three more weeks and then we will launch the whole thing and you can buy all the stuff and you know see all the merch there is some really cool stuff coming cool custom leather man cool shirts cool hoodies everything produced fair and in portugal so blah 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 i don't want to talk too much about it but if you're looking to buy merch hold hold on for three more weeks it it should be good it should be worth the wait so anyways i want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye.